yesterday. He, who, he came from the oldest Christian community. His name is Louis Rafael Saku, Cardinal Rafael Saku, Archbishop of Baghdad, uh, Patriarch, Catholic Pat Patriarch of, uh, uh, of Chaldean Church. He uh, became the leader of this uh, community when, uh, in a period when the Islam State didn't spare people and uh, monuments of which were part of the world heritage. Um, uh, amongst the uh, destruction, uh, Cardinal Saku had an alarming call for help. Uh, and uh, uh, turn the attention towards the persecution of uh, Christian people. Uh, because of war, uh, more than one million uh, Catholic uh, people escaped from their homes. The Patriarch is the uh, is for uh, dialogue. Um, he took part in a lot of humanitarian um, actions. Uh, he always highlights during these meetings, we are Christian, we are next to them. We are brothers and sisters. We are not unbelievable, no, non-believers. Uh, unbelievers are those who persecuted us, who did, did uh, bad things to us and to them. Luis Safar Sacco, um, uh, tries hard to um, to make it possible for people to return to their homes with the support of the international Christian community, with and with the support of our uh, of Hungary as well. Uh, receive him with a lot of love. So first of all, I want to thank His Eminence, the uh, Cardinal. Erdo for inviting me to participate in this uh, uh, event, which is not an event for the Hungarian population, but I think for the whole world. And um, you know, in this critical time of wars uh, and conflicts in the Middle East, but also the pandemic, I think this event should bring the, the whole world uh, an appeal of uh, fraternity and uh, peace. And Christians all over the world should be not troublemakers, but peacemakers. And uh, as I heard uh, Cardinal uh, uh, Lacroix saying uh, that Jesus, after the res his resurrection, said, peace be, be with you. So in our uh, Chaldean Mass, Twice we say, peace be, be with you. First, in the beginning of the Mass, I, uh, in the beginning uh, of reading the Gospel, the celebrant says, peace be, be, be with you. This is the Word of God, the peace of the Word of God. But also, uh, before the, the communion, when he is uh, breaking the, the big host in two pieces and put them together, and Lifting, lifting them uh, up, saying, peace be with you. This is also the peace of the Eucharist in, uh, in our community. So I think this is very essential to have peace. Without peace, there is no, no life, no freedom, no stability, as we are uh, living in, in the Middle East, in, uh, in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Yemen. And this is a pity. Also, I, I want to uh, thank the Hungarian uh, government for their support, uh, the Christians in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, and other, other countries. And I, I have some pictures, you know, I don't know if you can see them, about the work. Because with this help, many villages and the houses of people, displaced people, have been restored. And now many of them, I think 60% of them, are back to their villages in the Nineveh Plain or uh, in other uh, cities. The Middle Eastern Christian drama has been going on for years, not now, for only now. The pressures are though, and the immigration hemorrhage <clears throat> continues in countries such as Iraq, Syria, and now Lebanon. Holy Land 
<clears throat> Unfortunately, the West is not aware of the difficulties and fears that Christians are facing in various countries. Radicalism, terror, as a political and religious ideology is growing more and more in the Middle East. And Christians are innocent victims, regardless of their education. Extremists want to take advantage of the current situation to mark the end of Christians' presence in the Middle East. Many have left the country, making life difficult for those who wish to stay and continue their testimony with enthusiasm and persistence. Since Middle Eastern Christians are the root of Christianity, we believe that their presence is crucial and they rely on your support, your prayers, but also your solidarity. My example in this speech will be uh, focusing on Chaldean Church, which is similar to other churches in the part of the world. Historic background, Christianity entered Mesopotamia, now Iraq, around the end of the first century, according to the, uh, the tradition, St. Thomas the Apostle was the first one to evangelize those religions through his trip to India. He is uh, considered the patron of the Church of the East. Church of the, of the East is the Chaldean Church now. After finishing his mission in Mesopotamia, St. Thomas went to India, bringing the good news to the people of, uh, in, uh, of Kerala region, and the Christians of the Malabar coast are still knowing as Christians of St. Thomas, Malabar and Malankara. They are still using the Chaldean liturgies tra uh, translated after Vatican II into Malayalam, the local uh, dialect. The apostles preached normally wherever there were Jewish community and uh, because uh, of the biblical faith and background uh, and also the language. As it was the case in Mesopotamia after the exile of the Jews uh, in uh, five, uh, 5, uh, before Christ. That is why our liturgy is a Jewish Christian liturgy. A synod, which was the first of its kind in 410, under the auspice of Patriarch Isaac, gathered 40 bishops, and a number of crucial decisions were issued that, uh, concerning dogma, administration, and ritual practices, such as the adoption of the Nicene Creed. Having a single leader of the church, the Archbishop Celestia Tessifonte, and the management system of dioceses. The openness of, to the world, history witnessed, and incomparable evangelization carried out by the Church of the East that extended to the Far East from Sumatra Island. Sri Lanka, the Indian Malabar coast, and China. And in the Middle Ages, we, uh, this church uh, had 220 dioceses, and the, the number of the, the faithful were about 80, 80 million. At that time, the, the church of the East, or the Chaldean church, was a little bit the Catholic church, universal church in that time. Martyrdom is, it is charisma. Until now, the Chaldean Church had no external designs and building decoration because it didn't exist in a Christian state. We don't have this uh, Byzantine triumphalism. It is very simple, but very deep. Yeah. However, it is a beauty is from within not outside, in the liturgy, spirituality, and martyrs, 
who sacrificed their lives for their faith and still are up to, to date. Martyrdom is the charisma charm of the Chaldean Church because since its founding, it has been through persecution by, the, by Persians, Muslim Arabs, Mongols, Ottomans, and today by extremists like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. <clears throat> You know, in one night, in one night, in uh, uh, two, uh, 2014, 120,000 uh, people left their homes and their houses without nothing, with only with their clothes. And we admire that no one left uh, his faith. No one was converted to Islam just to stay at home and be protected. All of them, they left their, uh, their houses to, uh, to other uh, cities in Kurdistan. Yeah. And uh, maybe you, you remember and, uh, in uh, you know, uh, two, 2010, uh, in Baghdad, on October 31st, where uh, 48 people killed during the mass. And among them, two young people, two young G uh, priests. They went to, to speak uh, to the, you know, to the uh, terrorists saying, you can take us, you can kill us, but uh, please let the others go out. They didn't uh, accept their, uh, you know, their uh, proposal and they killed them, both of them. And I have had them in the seminary when I was rector of the seminary. Our Christology, this is something special, you know. We are a Catholic church, but in the Catholic church is also diversity. And this is a richness. See, since the church of the East was outside the borders, for impero, of the Roman Empire and isolated to the, it is geographic and political situ, uh, situations. It didn't participate in the ecumenical councils at that time, Ephesus or Chalcedonian. Also, it is not right to name it as an historian church. Nestorian, Nestorius was the patriarch of Constantinople, but not in Mesopotamia. There is nothing to do with them and his language was Greek, and here the language is, was Syriac. This, uh, you know, this Christology is based on synoptic gospels, from human to God, in contrast to the, uh, the, the, the descending person according to the Alexandrian description, description from God to man counting on the word logos as stated in the beginning of St. John's Gospel. When I am, I am speaking to them, this man is, uh, you know, the son of God. This is giving me a lot of hope. I can also be the man of God or the son of God. Uh, just like Jesus, to imitate Jesus. But if he is uh, coming from, uh, from the, uh, you know, from heaven, and uh, it, 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 this is very difficult, you know, to imitate him because I am a human being and he is the son of God coming up from, uh, you know, up uh, to below. It is, it is not easy, you know. So, however, the differences are related to vocabulary according to the Christological statement issued by St. Pope John Paul II and the Patriarch of the, uh, the Church of the East um, in 1994 uh, in Rome. The Chaldean Catholic Church, when Crusaders occupied the Holy Land, Western missionaries came to the East, and in Cyprus, the first uh, denomination given uh, to, uh, to the Christians community in, uh, I mean, the uh, Chaldean community in Cyprus was um, in uh, 1340, uh, 40, 40 was 
the bishop of Cyprus was called, uh, was considered a, a Catholic bishop, and his community was called uh, Chaldean. But also later in the, uh, the Council of Ferrara, Florence, uh, a big community from Cyprus was also called uh, uh, Chaldean Catholic. But without the denomination, the Sea of Babylon, and now in our synod will change. We, we are no more the patriarch of Babylon of, uh, for Chaldeans. We are the patriarch of Chaldeans only. We took out Babylon. Today, the Chaldean church has uh, 18 dioceses, eight in Iraq and two in Iran, and the bishop, uh, the, you know, the ex-bishop of uh, Tehran is among us. Now he's the bishop or archbishop of Istanbul. One in Syria, one in Lebanon, one in Egypt, and one in Turkey, two in America, and one in Canada, and one in Australia. The number of the faithful is more than one million. The Eastern spirituality, Oriental spirituality is a project to know deeply the person of Christ and to be integrated with him. Jesus Christ is the, the head of the salvation, what we call oikonomia, which is realized in the church, the community, his mystical body, and ultimately inside the faithful when there is a gradual marching during the, liturg the liturgical year, I mean seasons, as we go through different stages of salvation history, living the real theological and moral meaning to be crowned eventually by the sanctification of the church. This is also an eschatological dimension. This uh, spirituality started from the grace the grace of God. So it is very positive, nothing negative. And we rare, rare we are speaking about mortification. Or the cross, even our cross is empty without body because he is risen. And we, we, we call it the glory is the cross. And this is giving us a lot of hope during our persecutions. Also, through continuous personal and communal meditation in the, the mystery of Christ and the church. It is forming program grounded on reflection and meditation and essential and predestination subject that form a Christian community. Based on this, the Eastern liturgy, um, not only the Chaldean liturgy, but also Antiochian liturgy, Maronite and Syriac, places a permanent shining light in the middle of the temple to illuminate the tables of the Eucharist and also the Holy Bible. That means to shed the light on Jesus Christ, to honor him and to follow his example. A Christian faithful without a mystical spiritual experience is incomplete. Christian must have some mystical experience, which is not an exceptional situation, not only for the monks and the religious, it's for everyone, for everyone. Spirituality means that we let the Holy Spirit pray inside us to lead us to know the mystery of God rather than to be isolated from the world by having a direct knowledge of God as our Father. So, so the Holy Spirit, to lift the Holy Spirit, bring us something from, from God to our knowledge and to our life. This sort of knowledge should increase in the midst of the detail, our detailed uh, daily uh, life, and we should be witness for that. You know, sometimes Muslims are asking us, why Christians are different? They are asking, some, some Christians. 
We are different because we believe in Christ. And the, the behavior, the example of Christ should be our example. So we need to witness something different from them to them. According to the Eastern tradition, there are two conditions for the spiritual life. A commitment to follow the example of Jesus Christ. And this is, you know, maybe the, the purpose or the scope of this uh, Eucharistic Congress. This is based on a radical divine love relationship similar to be wedded couples convent. We receive the Eucharist, the body of Christ, until it is transformed to us. This body is for me, that I should be also the body of Christ, to reflect his body to the others. That is, we take some, something from him. Each day we, we take something from Christ to put it on, on us to be, in order to be transformed to him. This is the transubiation, it may be. What for? Why I am doing that? Because I love that son. I have become a son who joins uh, the one who does not die is also not dead. Who is pleased with life becomes alive. So. I am taking something because he is eternal, he is alive. I am taking something from him to put it on me to, to have the eternal life. And this is, you know, uh, the hymn is in our liturgy, a hymn of Solomon. The second one is practicing deep prayer or spiritual and mystic heart prayers. This emotional practice allows the faithful to unite with God through prostration and thanksgiving, providing us with power, light, and peace during a daily struggle. The, the prayer is not a structure. Even liturgy should be not a structure. This is something from the heart. And our problem is uh, in the Middle East because we are also speaking with our heart, not with our mind. We are very sentimental, emotional, because we love. We are living in, even in our families, we are living close to each other. We cannot live uh, without uh, a family. This is very hard for us. The communionship, because here in the, uh, you know, in the West, they are individualism and also um, consu consumation and agnostic, we don't know why. And this is terrible. Now, what is the future of Christian in Iraq and also in, uh, in Lebanon and in, uh, in Syria, especially after Pope's visit? The apostolic visit of Pope Francis to Iraq from 5 to 8 March uh, 2021. And Iraqi Christians in particular is historical and importance lies in supporting a persecuted Christian uh, church that continues to suffer and lives in the climate of mistrust and suspicion which prevent Christians from seeing a future in their own country. Pope Francis' visits, visit strengthens Christian faith and renews their hope as well as filling them with uh, enthusiasm to rebuild the trust and cooperate with their citizens based on a national and spiritual fraternity. He repeated many times, you know, that we are brothers and sisters, but we, we have to admit that we are different. It, it, even in a family, you know, we are different. We have different names, but sometimes we have different colors. I, am, I have the uh, uh, dark heart. My brother is much more uh, red.
the Pope touches the hearts of all Iraqis by these messages, especially Muslims. And now something has changed in the streets, uh, you know, in the mass, the population. Yeah. Christians have the, you know, very, uh, are, are proud of that, and now they, they are very appreciated also. And when he was speaking to respect each other, we are always, uh, all of, we are all brothers and sisters to live in dignity. And I was with him to visit Ayatollah Sistani, the, the supreme, uh, you know, Shiite authority, and the, the imam said something very important, he said, you are Christians, that means Christians and the Pope, you are a part of us, and we are a part of you. Uh, that means we are brothers. Cardinal uh, uh, Pietro Parolin summarized that what he has learned from this meeting with the Iraqi believers by saying that it is a testimony of faith that reaches the point of martyrdom. This is the great lesson that we can draw today from Iraqi Christians. Despite the attacks and murders, Christians in Iraq continue to proclaim their Catholic faith with great courage. We are not ashamed to say we are Christians. Sometimes here, you know, in the West, maybe people have no courage to say that we are, they are Christians. They are agnostic. It is a great teaching of the Pope. He added that they teach us the ability of the to be honest in spite of all difficulties. This is the call of solidarity. Christians share the same dream that with Iraqis and also in Lebanon and Syria, the population, I, I don't mean the politicians. The politicians are looking for the power and money. And this is corruption. So they, to live in peace, stability, equality, and dignity, I mean citizenship. And we, I am always asking from Iraqi government, you know, to separate religion from the state. They are two th different things. I am an Iraqi citizen. It doesn't matter. I am Christian or I am Muslim, I believe or not. But I am Iraqi. They would appreciate every help to achieve that. The only solution is to have a strong secular civil state and real democracy similar to the one applied in most countries of the world. The secular regime embraces and protects all religions, cultures, groups, and languages, manages public affairs fairly and protects them. The civil state does not interfere with the religious uh, choices of its citizens and does not elevate its politics to an ideological doctrine, sectarian. The Americans brought us sectarian, sect, sectarianism. Before that, there was no sect, sectarian mentality among Iraq. We were not asking, you are Muslim, you are Shiite, you are Sunnite, you are a Christian, you are Kurds. Never. I am Iraqi. It is a requirement to separate religion from politics. The international community should help Iraqis to implement this vital project. On the other hand, and in order to stop the immigration of Christians, it is necessary to improve the situation of their cities and villages, as Hungarian government uh, did. And now there is a big a town in, uh, in Nineveh plain called Teleskov. They call it the daughter of Hungarian government or of Hungary. 
conclusion. This International Eucharistic Congress should be an opportunity for every Christian to deepen his incorporation into Christ and then to strengthen communion and unity among them through their membership in the church. Each Eucharistic celebration is a celebration of Last Supper and carries the meaning of sharing and being together. Let us complete our spiritual journey to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who will not leave us in darkness, but will shine with the light of his resurrection uh, on us. I, I, I suggest that from this Eucharistic Congress, you can launch an appeal for uh, peace and fraternity and to stop you know, the, the voices of uh, weapons and wars and killing each uh, other. I think that will be also from, from the background of our faith and the Eucharist. Thank you so much.